Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and welcome to my roundup of all of the vintage collection reveals and pipelines from this year's Star Wars celebration in London. I've not long got back from the panel and from an interview that I had with the Hasbro Star Wars team. So hopefully the audio on that interview will be good enough to use on a future video. But for now on this video we're going to be taking a look at all of the high res images from today's reveals. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and of course all of the all important pre-order information. So if you do happen to enjoy the video don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new. And let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into this. Okay then, let's start with a couple of previous pipelines that we saw actual images for, starting off with Moff Jajerod from Return of the Jedi. Now this one reuses the new Imperial Officer sculpt that they've used for Admiral Piet. The only real difference here is the head sculpt. Now it is difficult to tell how accurate the portrait is by these images, and something that I've learned after seeing the new Han Solo Endor in the flesh is that these images often don't do the figures justice. Believe me, that Han Solo figure is much better, you know, in hand. No official high-res images for the card back at present, but I do have this one from the panel for you to take a look at that card back image. And that's all we have for that image at the moment. All in all, a very good release to almost complete the Emperor's arrival scene. Just missing a few of the Imperial dignitaries. Next up, we have Ni Num, which is a straight reissue from TVC 1.0. One that I'm particularly pleased with because I do not have this figure loose. So it's an opportunity for me to do that. If you already have this one, then obviously you don't need to get it. But if you're a carded collector and a variant collector, then of course this one is different from the original release because it does have that 40th anniversary logo in the top left-hand corner. It will be on the thicker cardstock, all those kinds of things. So maybe not one that everyone needs to get, but certainly a good one for me because as I say, I do not have this figure loose. Following on with more of the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary, we have pretty much the best reveal of the day in my opinion, or one of them anyway, and it is the vintage collection Jabba's Court Denizens, which includes four carded figures, and those four carded figures are Velkin Tazeri, Tayem Drengaran, Riiz, and Squidhead. Four awesome characters to include there. Of course, one of them is a repack, which we will get onto in a second. But in terms of the figures, I think they all look fantastic. Velkin Tazeri obviously helps us complete the skiff, the prisoner skiff. He was the final figure that we needed for that prisoner skiff. And then you also have Tyem Drengarin, which is the guy that shot Luke Skywalker's hand on top of the barge. So he's a really important character to have as well. Squidhead, one of my favorite figures from the original vintage Kenner line one that I've been wanting for so long in the line he's finally here he looks absolutely awesome and on that classic Kenner card back of course helps tick off one of the original 96 in terms of Reese, I suspect that they've included this figure to help pay for the rest of the other three figures if you know what I mean of course, we do have him already in that Jabba's Palace set. But then again, that set is now quite expensive on the secondary market. So I would imagine that people that weren't able to get that set, you know, are going to be quite pleased that they've got another chance of getting Reese. And of course, once again, similar to Nin Num, it's a variant card back. It has the 40th anniversary in the left hand corner. It's going to be probably unpunched on thicker cardstock. All of that good stuff. Now, what often happens with these four packs is that they are sort of kit bashes and reuses of other figures. And I was told by Emily that under the skirt of Squidhead, for example, they've used Cal Kestis's legs. So they do want to use up-to-date figures with up-to-date articulation. But of course, to get these figures across the line, they do need to kit bash. So some of you eagle-eyed people out there might be able to sort of detect maybe some arms or legs that have been used on previous figures. But to be honest, I really don't care. It's a great way of getting these characters out there. And what a fantastic four pack for the original trilogy collector out there. And of course, as I said, Squidhead really does tick off one of those original 96. Uh, and it's an alien as well, one of Jabba's goons. So, so happy with this release. And this one out of everything that has been revealed today is the only one that is a Hasbro Pulse Stroke Shop Disney exclusive. All the other reveals are going to be available in all major retailers, Hasbro Pulse, Entertainment Earth, Star Action Figures if you're in the UK. So anyway, let's get on to more of the reveals. But this set for me was the pick of the bunch today. Moving on to other media and specifically the Book of Boba Fett, we finally 
have the reveal for Black Chrysanthemum. Now, obviously, this was revealed last week, I believe, in the Black Series, and now we have him in the Vintage Collection. And as predicted, he is a deluxe figure in one of those windowless boxes. Now, I think I mentioned on one of my reveals videos from last week that the TVC version of Black Chrysanthemum would be very similar to the Black Series version. And to be honest, I don't think I was too far off. I think this figure looks absolutely amazing. I'm really happy with the sculpt. And I think it just captures that huge Wookiee pretty perfectly. I think he looks awesome with his armor pieces and his plaits coming down from his beard. He also comes with his heavy blaster as he does with the Black Series. But for the Vintage Collection, we also get some extra accessories as well. We get his drinking mug. We get a piece of fruit that I think he was eating in that bar scene. And we also get his electrified knuckle dusters, which actually look pretty good on the figure as well. I think they've done those pretty well. So all in all, if you're a fan of Chrysanthemum and you're a fan of the Book of Boba Fett, then you know, you're going to be pretty happy with this one. Unfortunately, he isn't on a card back, which is the only letdown of this one. He is a deluxe, so he is going to be in those windowless boxes. But I think it's still a good release and obviously he's needed for the line. And finally, we have the Mandalorian N1 Starfighter, which was pipelined. Now, this is an awesome looking vehicle. When I saw it in the flesh, it really, really does look good. I cannot wait to get this one. And of course, it is presented in a Mandalorian box. For anyone that's wondering out there, it could have been in either a Mandalorian or a Book of Boba Fett box, but they've gone for the Mandalorian. And there's a few reasons for that, which I'll come on to in a second. He comes with a carded Beskar Mandalorian or Din Djarin, which is another way to get the best version that we currently have of him, which was only previously available in the Rescue set. The card back image for this one is actually one of my favourite images of the Mandalorian, one of my favourite card backs of him. I think it's a really, really great image of him sitting there in the N1. The set also includes a Grogu who fits very nicely into the little pod behind the cockpit but the best thing about this and a lot of you were wondering is that that dome is removable and you can put the head of a previously released r5d4 or any other astromech droid that uses the builder droid sculpt so that just fits on the top so the whole droid doesn't fit in it's just the head and i thought that was a really good way of executing this feature on the ship now there are so many other features to go through on this vehicle but I kind of just want to let the images do the talking. Chris the designer did mention that the paint apps for the silver were a little bit different at the front compared to the main body which is a sort of molded silver plastic and I think that does go some way to making it look as accurate as possible. Now this is something that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for and for me it does not disappoint whatsoever. It's always great to get vehicles in the vintage collection. And this one at a price point of I think $129.99. With today's prices, I don't actually think that's too bad. You get the carded figure, you get Grogu. Uh, there's loads of features and things that I haven't gone through on that ship. And I just think it looks great. So really nice box for you inbox collectors as well. Okay, so I think that's it for the actual reveals. But next we have some pipeline reveals to go through and some absolutely amazing figures to look forward to, including the Grand Inquisitor from the Obi-Wan series. He's much needed. Thank God he's coming. We also have Director Krennic from Rogue One, which shows that they can still go back to old media. But it's probably got something to do with the fact that he will be in maybe Andor Series 2 or something like that. So he's still relevant. Great to have Krennic in the line. Obviously, they can use that body from Admiral Pierre. I'm sure they'll be using that for many different officers in the future, including Grand Admiral Thrawn. And I did have this one confirmed. It is from his appearance in Rebels. So it will be an animated style made to look realistic on a Rebels card back, which is cool. And I asked Emily about this one and she said maybe sort of try and picture what the Black Series one looks like in terms of that sort of realistic face sculpt for him. We also got Pre Vizsla. So that one's an easy one for them to do because we already have the Death Watch Mandalorian sculpt. So it's just basically a different head on that one. I think that one will be awesome as well. And finally, we have Darth Revan, which I know will please a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure this one's going to be an all new Darth Revan won't be that silly one from the 30th anniversary that they wanted to put out in the line and then we all got it cancelled so 
Lots to look forward to in the pipeline. Can't wait for all of those. And I'm pretty sure most of those are going to be available in 2023 as well. I don't think anything that was revealed today will be for next year. Pretty certain of that anyway. And of course, the other thing to mention is the small matter of a vintage collection HasLab, which wasn't revealed what it is going to be, but it was revealed that they're going to be doing one. I would imagine that we'll find out what it is at SDCC. There's lots of rumours swirling around the internet of what it could be, but we'll have to wait and see exactly what that is. But still, another thing to get excited about. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I really want to know your thoughts on everything that was revealed today. I actually think it's one of the best panels that I've ever been to in terms of the reveals. So many cool things for everybody, basically, in this reveal. So I'm really, really happy. As I mentioned, in terms of pre-orders, all of this will be available for pre-order on the 11th of April at 1pm EST or 6pm BST at most major retailers, including Hasbro Pulse, Entertainment Earth. If you come back to my channel on that day and time, then you'll see all the links that you need to order those figures. As I said before, the only one, the four pack, the Return of the Jedi four pack, that will be available only at Hasbro Pulse and Shop Disney. So unfortunately, if you live somewhere that doesn't have one of those, it's going to be a bit tough for you to get it, which is very unfortunate. So sorry about that. All right then, guys, I just want to say a big thank you. Uh, you can hear that my voice is probably cracking. I've been talking to so many people at Celebration today. It's been absolutely awesome meeting everybody. So if I, if I met you today, it was awesome. Thank you so much for saying hello and all that kind of thing. I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members, as always, for supporting my channel. And it was great to meet many of you as well uh, in the last couple of days. So thanks for watching, everybody. And we shall see you on the next one.